Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and you're just getting me today because Neon is busy watching the dog who will not let us record unless someone is sitting with him at all times. So today we're going to talk about Disney again. So I guess it's a daily dose of dismal Disney, as Neon would say. Um, Disney has put out a new announcement about their big Disney thrills that are coming. I put it on the Parks blog today. And it's about all the different things that they have coming to the parks. Now, remember, we talked before about how Josh Demaro has been out there saying, oh, you know, the Tron coaster is the tip of the iceberg. And now Bob Iger is trying to say that, oh, they have a lot of stuff coming. But what they have coming and what their announcements are, I have them in quotes, they're either things that are long announced and they're just now finally getting around to launching them. Or, you know, sometime this year, now or this year, like Tron coaster, the journey of water or whatever. When you look ahead to things that are supposed to be coming, other than the Tiana, Princess and the Frog, Reed skin to Splash Mountain, there isn't a whole lot coming. Those are things already been open. So what's going on is uh, they're announcing weird things, or like little cheap things, like meet and greets. And that's is literally what the, their big thrills announcements include. They're including things like meet and greets and things like that because they don't really have anything, but they're trying to give the illusion they have something. And I think it's a couple of things. One of them being it costs money to build this stuff and they've got to do something because here comes Epic Universe and it's going to be massive. And Disney, I mean, it's big. There's lots to do there, but they're not staying competitive because they're not keeping up with new things, um, which is a good and a bad thing, I guess, because, you know, I'm tired of seeing IP just thrown into Epcot because they can um, but they're going to be in for a world of hurt soon. People are starting to pick Universal over Disney because it's a better deal in a lot of ways. And Disney's answer to this is to make this big announcement, which is nothing burger. So before we get into it any further, please like and subscribe. I think we're at 298,000 subscribers. Yay! So please help us get to 300,000. Um, Neon keeps saying, I don't know what we're going to do when we hit 300,000, but I was under the impression we were doing a, a live stream. So I don't know, but please help us get to 300,000. Make sure you're still subscribed. So we're going to go out to this. Um, yeah. So today, this is the big announcement they put out. Just announced new Disney thrills coming to Walt Disney World. Okay. You're like thrills. Wow. That's awesome. Thrills, the Tron coaster, which we knew about it's opening on the 4th of April. Um, and then, oh, then here we have, oh, later this year, you're going to get the journey of water walkthrough attraction. It's literally a walkthrough with some impressive, you know, scenery and like stuff that lights up. And I'm sure it's going to be very pretty. And Epcot could really use the water or like a water location because it gets very hot there. Epcot's very hot. Um, but it's not like, oh my gosh, thrilling, groundbreaking. It's a walkthrough. It's kind of like, you know, the safari treks that you walk through at, at Animal Kingdom. And then they're going to have Communicore Hall, which I, you know, I think looks beautiful. I think it's absolutely stunning to look at. And I think it's very pretty and I'm very excited about it. However, what is Communicore Hall? It is going to be the home of the, the hub of the festivals. So basically what they use the Odyssey for, what they used to use Wonders of Life for, that's what this is going to be. They have a sample picture here. Here's a sample of um, their Festival of the Arts, what you might see. But all it reminds me of is uh, the Walt Disney Presents, which is a one man's dream over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. It looks like that. A bunch of things that can be, can be swapped out. And they're going to have meet and greets there because they're going to do the 100th anniversary Disney 100 celebration at Epcot this year. And they're going to have Mickey and Minnie in their platinum. I don't know if Minnie's dripping this time, but their platinum outfits. And it'll be probably at one of these locations. So, yeah, that's what this, this is. It's basically a, a, a hall that's a multi-purpose that's used for festivals. And they can just swap out exhibits. One man's dream basically in Epcot. So that's their big announcement. Okay. And they're like, well, what other big announcements? Oh, they're getting a new, uh, fireworks show, which we knew about Epcot, but nothing on it other than that's coming. Maybe possibly, you know how D 23, they announced what's behind big thunder mountain and, you know, over at animal kingdom, we might get Moana and Zootopia. Well, yeah, those were maybe possibly maybe things, which I have another thing I was going to show you in a minute. But they announced, so you were getting Moana at Disney's Animal Kingdom, but it's a meet and greet at Discovery Island on April 22nd to celebrate the anniversary of Animal Kingdom. 
you can go see Moana as a meet and greet. That's their big, exciting tip of the iceberg news, okay? And over at Magic Kingdom, hot damn, it's Mirabelle, and she's coming in, and she's going to be there in the fantasy garden, or the fairy tale garden area, sorry, fairy tale gardens area. And she's going to be there because they're going to transform the area with whimsical decor. So they're going to take the garden that already exists, throw some decorative shit into it, put her in there and be like, hot damn, guys, we have a brand new attraction. Aren't you excited? This is their plan. The point is they have no plan. Their plan is we can't afford to do a lot of stuff at this point in time. I mean, at least in my opinion, they can't afford to do a lot of stuff. And they don't have a lot of stuff officially announced. They keep canceling the stuff they did have announced. Um, they're just now finishing stuff that they announced, you know, six years ago. Um, Grant, the co the pandemic was in there, but come on. The pandemic didn't keep Florida down very long. There's, you know, bull crap. That This is their big announcements. Um, I saw at another place they were talking about how there's a Disney World Imagineer who's talking about the fan interest, you know, and what happened to D23 and their new lands. So, again, I talked about at D23 they announced they were going to do, like, what's behind, you know, Big Thunder Mountain, and, and we're going to probably put, you know, Coco and Encanto and a Disney Villains Land back there, right? So they're talking to an Imagineer, and the Imagineer is this Chris Beatty, which I'm pretty sure was one of the ones who thought that making native chimpanzees was a good idea. Here's his quote. We're dreaming every day about what could be next at Walt Disney World. We just wanted to give you a peek, they're talking about D23, at some of the amazing things that could be coming. It's changing every day. That says to me is it's changing on time because it's got to be based on what you can afford. I mean, you, there's no big announcements. It's maybe, possibly, maybe. And we said when they did the D23 panel that it, it seemed like a lot of stuff they were throwing out there to see what people would respond to, what stuck. It was like they were using it for their, you know, marketing department to, to gauge interest. And that's kind of what they say here. They're saying it's exciting. I think Josh is really trying to get across that spirit of creativity of what could be next, of innovation, of the possibility of what could be still alive and well at Disney Imag and Imagineering. So the D23 presentation, which he stresses was not intended to highlight concrete plans for the park, but rather his team dreaming about what could be ahead. Again, you don't go to D23 and then be like, hey guys, we're going to present to you all blue sky, possibly maybe ideas because this is what's going on in Imagineering and we have no fucking clue what we're going to do or how we're going to pay for it, but we're just going to throw it out to the universe and see what people like. And that's just what they did. And they say that. The villains concept got pretty good applause. We took note of how loud the applause was when we announced it. So it reminds me of those contests where people are up on stage and they have the applause meter And by the applause meter they decide who the winner is. So when you're using the D23 fan expo and the, and the fan media and all that to go out there and try to find what people are interested in to, to decide what you're going to spend your money on. I mean, I get it. On one hand, I think it's you know, not a bad idea. But on the other hand, I'm like, but you shouldn't come out. There's other ways to do it instead of coming up on stage and saying, here's plans that we maybe possibly maybe have. Um, and then turn around and say, guess what? We've got a Mirabelle meet and greet. You know, it's really, it's really cheap and it's really lazy. And I actually did a story today. I said, new Disney Thrills announcement misses the mark because they, they, they miss the mark. They're not impressive at all. They're just like stuff we already knew and a meet and greet, two meet and greets. Oh, they keep mentioning the Figma meet and greet, but you never see anything about that, no pictures or anything. But yeah, that's what happened in D23 also last year. They're talking about Journey and Imagination. We've got big news, Journey and Imagination. Everybody's getting excited. They're like, oh my God, Journey and Imagination. They're going to announce they're fixing the ride. Thou, hallelujah, thank the Lord. And then he gets up there and he's like, coming in summer 2023, we're going to have a Figma meet and greet. So their answers to everything is basically meet and greets, which are cheap. They can just theme the area on the damn cheap, and here you go. It was not that. It's re-themes of other attractions. I guarantee if they have any more announcements, it's most likely going to be re-themes. Or if they announce they're going to do What's Beyond Big Thunder Mountain, it'll be like coming in 10 years. What's Beyond Big Thunder Mountain? And then half it will get canceled in two years anyway. So this is going on. And while this is going on, people are, you know, they're more and more excited about Epic Universe. Um, here we have fans. Is this about fans? I'm with G23 panel. Why people are leaving Disney for Universal. The food's cheaper. The hotels are cheaper. And uh, what they, we stay at like a, a suite in one of the um, value resorts at Universal Orlando. And that's better than what you get at some moderates or deluxes at Walt Disney World. And it's a hell of a lot cheaper. 
And now I'm not a big fan of all the, you know, IPs at Universal. And I, and in person, I like Disney better. That's my personal opinion. But Universal has a lot to offer and they're going to come in, they're bringing it. I'm very excited about Epic Universe because I think my opinion is going to change when that comes out just based on what I'm seeing. And Disney is just not keeping up. And I understand it's really hard to keep building new stuff all the time. And sometimes you can't just keep building new things. But if Disney wants to remain competitive and they want to keep justifying the prices they're charging, Genie Plus and all this stuff, they keep, you know, we're going to give you a meet and greet, but we're going to keep the ticket prices high. And there, there's a new attraction, guys. That's what they're doing. Like, here's these new attractions. These are all these new exciting things. And they're big nothing burgers um, or just things that they finally got around to finishing after years of announcements. So they're not really exciting anymore. And they're like, okay, hey, well, you know, next to me, the ticket prices are going up to cover it. It's like, if you're charging me more for a ticket, I'm getting a whole nother like villains land, Disney villains land. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'll pay a little bit, a couple extra bucks for a villains land. You're giving them, you're going to raise the ticket prices and tell me, oh, hot damn, here's Mirabelle. I'm going to be like, uh, no, that's stupid. I'm not paying more for that. Um, it's just dumb. And it's and sadly this is coming. I mean, I like the looks of these buildings and they have so much potential. And then when you look at what it's for, it's one man's dream all over again. It, and that's not what it was meant. These met, were meant to be. I mean, they're meant to be exciting things they were going to do at Epcot. They were going to have a big, you know, festival pavilion, which has got canceled. So now this is becoming that it's Communicore. The original Communicore was full of all different awesome things like robotics and stuff like that, that when it, it was very impressive at the time. I remember I went to Communicore multiple times and they could have done something really cool with it because it's Communicore. And their idea for Communicore is, hey, we'll put meet and greets in there and, and walk through rotating attractions. Walk through Moana Journey of Water. I mean, none of these are anything that's going to cost them a lot or be hard. It's just, it's just cheap. We're trying to do everything on the cheap. Like Toy Story Land, it looks like, it looks like a, a theme park, like a, a carnival pop-up theme park area. It's like they're trying to do more and more things um, out of the box. We have the Tron coaster, which is pretty much a replica of the one over in, in uh, China. And they're bringing it over here. So there really wasn't much they could they had to do to it. R R Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, copy of the one from France. And they were just one-offs. Like they didn't have to do anything. Like then we have Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, which was a completely new thing. It's very exciting and people want to ride it and they, they still can't get passes for it or get on it. And like, that's an exciting new thing. That one I can see, you know, yay, even Tron, even though it's a copy, it's an exciting new thing. But what comes next? Those are out. Now what? I'm sorry, but a walkthrough and some meet and greets are not going to cut it, especially with Epic Universe is coming for your lunch. Anyway, I just thought it was amusing that they put that out as their big new thrills. That's thrilling. You know, I'm, I'm so excited. I can feel the adrenaline pumping for Moana, meet and greet, hot diggity dog that's going to be the most exciting thrilling thing ever totally worth the price of admission says no one anyway i'm going to wrap this up i'll talk to you later bye